Good Wednesday. Good Wednesday. Everybody having a good Wednesday? Good hump day? Good hump evening? Um, well, what I was going to do for the first 10, 15 minutes last week, actually I wasn't going to do it at all down the first 10, 15 minutes last week, has turned into two weeks. Um, Y'all's little question cards here. And I had, and I wasn't going to do it this week, but I had so many people come up and, and want me to go over some more. So, so I will. Why not? I mean, y'all want to know, then we'll, 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 figure, we'll figure it out. Um, try, to, try to figure it out. So, so I went through them. I had a chance to, like last week, I got so many, I really didn't have a chance, obviously, even read them all, let alone answer them all. Uh, but I sat down, and I was, when, I, when I was reading them going over, I thought, man, you, know, you guys are, I, I mentioned last week about, you know, will my pet go to heaven kind of, you know, question. I was like, I mean, y'all are in the right church. I mean, and, and we think alike, th- think alike. When I first started, whenever I, I was brought up in church and um, my whole life and third generational uh, past, my grandfather, I had, I had an uncle, my grandfather and myself. So you can find three generations in there in church, whole family, I went to church. Um, and then, but to be honest with you, Whenever God called me into ministry, I, I, knew, I knew a lot about church, but I really didn't, didn't know anything. I found out that everything that I knew, I was told to believe that, and which, which is fine. I mean, you're told you just believe it, and you, you, you trust the people that, that speak into your life. You got you to, gotta, you gotta, if you don't trust them, I always say, if you don't, if you don't you know, how, how do you know you're in the right church? If, if you trust me as your pastor, then first of all, you're in the right church. If you don't, you're in the wrong church. Find somebody that you trust. And uh, so anyway, my point is, is that I had to sit down and thought, wow, I can't, I can't explain 90%, probably 95% of what I believe in. And, and that, was a, that was a problem for me. And so I literally sit down, how, how I started literally my first direction into whatever God called me to be. And I didn't know if I was going to be a missionary, you know, I was going to be in youth ministry my whole life or pastor and evangelist, whatever. Really didn't know, didn't care. But I knew I didn't know enough for someone to ask me a question. So I took a composition book. Y'all remember those? And, and pen and paper. Y'all old enough remember pen and paper? And, um, and, and just started writing down questions. All I did was write down questions. I mean, of stuff that I didn't, that I didn't know that I, that I was, and I use the word afraid, I was afraid somebody might ask me. If someone asked me this, could I answer it? And I just wrote them down. I, and I, I mean, I didn't do it like this one night. I just wouldn't do anything else but just constantly keep questions coming to my mind. And, and a lot of them, you know, was questions and then about that. And so that's, that's what I did. I still got that composition book. And, and, and then I started studying. That's how I studied the Bible and answering questions that I didn't know based on the Word of God. Now, I didn't have a computer, tell my age, I didn't have a computer. And, you know, and so to, you know, to study some, a concordance was a book. Can you imagine that? Not, you know, not bluelittlebible.com or a software or anything else. You know, the, I actually had a Bible dictionary. Um, I actually had um, Matthew Henry commentary. Come on, somebody. I mean, Matthew Henry, if he said it, I mean, it was, it was the gospel. And um, anyway, stuff like that. And so I began to find out. Anyway, so my point was is that I th- I was, when I was reading some of these questions, I thought that, um, man, that's some stuff I probably would have wrote down years ago. So I wrote down some stuff here. or didn't write down some stuff. I just broke the cards, some of the cards back in. You see, my, it's, 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 it's thinner. I tried to put some kind of direction into them. Last week, I loved last week because it was on the fly. And, um, and I, I love challenging myself to the point I, I just get you guys to ask questions and, and see, where I, see where I go with it. Holy Spirit, is, that's why the Bible says, Paul told Timothy, study to show yourself approved. There's things that your spirit gets in your spirit that your mind can't remember what you did yesterday, but it's in your spirit. And that's why you constantly stay in the Word. You constantly put it in your Word. You constantly come in there. And if you need it, it will come out. And, and last week what we were doing, there was stuff coming out of, of my spirit. It's, it's, it's the anointing. It just flows out because if in you. That's why it's very important that you get the Word of God in you. Because if it's not in you, it can't come out of you. So don't ask God. I mean, it's just not God's fault. God, why didn't you give me an answer to that? Well, you, you didn't put the answer in you. That's why you got to stay in the Word. Anyway, I, I grabbed this one just because of the way someone uh, signed this. Didn't sign, put their name on it. But it says, how do I pray for my son that has an addiction problem? And... Um, 
and, and and we're going to direction. But I want to make sure I get this one because I felt this 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 was this was heart this was heartfelt, and I, I'm going to answer it this way because we could spend all all, all today on, on this one. How do I pray for someone, especially a loved one, especially with something like a a spirit of addiction? And yeah, you know, we can go through the whole. We can we can break it down to you know, obviously it's it's a choice. It's it's a will. Um, not that now it's an addiction. I mean, it's, it, no, I've never met any person, you can't find an addict that drunk the first beer to be an addict, to be an alcoholic, or, or smoked the first joint to be a, a drug addict or be a crack, crack addict or, you know, all, all this kind of stuff, go through the whole thing. But that's what the enemy does. The Bible says in Proverbs that, that Satan is like a viper. I mean, he, that's what vipers do. I mean, you, you, you don't think he's going to bite you, but it will bite you. I actually take that back. It says strong drink is like a viper. Strong drink. Now, it's safe, but strong drink. Um, that's for my alcohol. Somebody actually asked about the alcohol. I didn't even bring it up here um, just because I didn't want to spend that much time on, it, on that tonight. But um, I, it, the, the answer to this, let me answer it this way without breaking all this kind of stuff down. Here, here, here's, what, here's, what I want, here's what I want to tell you. The person who wrote this and anybody else that's in here, um, without trying to be theologically correct and, and, and put you through a process of, you know, uh, of authority, love what we're saying a while ago, um, I have the authority. I understand you do have the authority. Um, as a parent, this is a son, as a parent, don't ever, I don't care if they're four or 40, you still have that authority. God has given you that child. And I always say, I do it through parenting teaching. Whatever, every child that God has given you, he's also given you everything you need to raise that child. He don't just give it to you and have a clue. That's, that's why the church can't raise your children. That's why your family member can't raise. That's why you have to raise your children. We can give you the instructions, give you what you need to help you raise your children, but you have to because God gave you the ability to raise them. Oh, you don't understand, my kid, how hard they are and rebellious and, you know, all kind of strong will. Yeah, but God, God knows that. He gave you everything you need. You have to have that. So here, here's, here's, what I wanna, here's, here's what hit me even today that I wanted to say on this, on this is that don't ever forget that whatever positive comes out of your mouth, especially if you pray and you speak the word of God, that you have all of heaven backing you up. And don't let the simplicity of this, just, you just write it off because this is, this is, this is, this is very important. The Bible says in, in Mark, um, how, how faith in God, if you, if you speak to that mountain and command it to be moved and cast into the sea and not doubt in your heart, you can have whatever you say it. And what sort of things you desire when you pray, if you believe you receive it, you shall have it. Okay? Mark 11, 22, 23, 24. If you say that. Okay, we, we understand that scripture is a great faith scripture. It's everything we have in it. What I want you to understand, and you have to get in your head, especially when you're praying for someone, especially like a child, or I say especially a child, because that's someone that is as close and near dear to you as, as any person on this planet will ever be. And the enemy can, can, can mesh with you. You have, to, you have to understand this. You belong to a kingdom. And all of heaven's resources and everything that heaven has is behind that, is behind that prayer. Everything is. If you believe that, then I'm telling you, the Bible does say the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous, man, righteous person availeth much. What I want you to understand, the reason why I said that, is if you speak negative or believe neg negativity, God won't touch it. It's just simple. That's why you have to constantly be careful. Constantly have to be careful. Um, <coughs> God will, God will honor his word, and you don't have some of heaven. you got all of heaven behind you, backing you up whenever you're pr praying and you're declaring that word. That's just, 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 just power in numbers and understanding that. And then, obviously, you just, we just know that heaven is bombarding that, that, that will that, that cannot be broken on their own, and, and you just need heaven to come down and just completely set them free. Because it's an addiction. that make any sense? So if I ever had to tell anyone to do that, I mean, I want you to do that. Um, there, there's so much I could go on that. That's just literally what brought in my spirit today. And I grabbed this one. I said, that's where that one goes. Here's, a, here's another one kind of close to that. Not really, but a little bit. I'm trying to put them a little bit close together. Why are there so many trials when you are trying to do your best and you don't know what else to do? 
even when you pray and pray. Why is there so many trials when you're trying to do your best? Well, John 16 says, in this world, um, you will have trouble. I mean, there will be trouble. Matter of fact, can you put John 16 and 33 up there somewhere? John 16 and 33. Um, I think I'll turn it myself after Sunday's fiasco when I told him to put the wrong scripture up there. Uh, put it up there. It's not there. I... I have told you these. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Um, let me let me say this about about peace. Jesus doesn't promise peace; he offers peace. And whenever you think that that he promises you peace in a situation, then be honest with you: you're in biblical error. It doesn't promise you. He offers, he offers you peace. And you can, find, you can find peace in the middle of a, of a storm. But, you, but in this world, you will have trouble. You have, you have tribulation because we're on this side, we're on this side of heaven. Um, so why is, there so many, why is there so many trials when you're trying to do your best? Well, to be honest with you, whether you're doing, you're trying to do your best or not, you, you, you're, having, you're having trouble. I haven't always been saved. I had a lot of trouble before I got saved. When I wasn't even trying to do my best. I wasn't even trying to do anything. So you, you're, going, you're going to have it. There, there, there's a devil loose, and he's, he's, he, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And, and just because you're not saved doesn't mean he's still not trying to get you. But he's, he's, always, he's always, trying to, always trying to get you. Um, so, so why is there so many trials? Even when you're trying to do your best, and, and you don't know what else to do, even you're trying, when you're trying to do your very best. I, I actually thought about, anytime I think of this, because, we, because I, I feel like the, I've been trying to think, even after last week, trying to think, what do you really mean by asking that question? And I, here's what you have to remember, because you said, this person says, even when you pray and pray and pray, it don't sound like it gets any better, or it still, still keeps on coming. Let me give you a, a Sunday school illustration when David stood before Goliath he took he, he took the rocks he took the rock and he threw and he knocked him, he, he knocked Goliath out right bam down he went okay our problem is we think that whenever we have a good service whenever we're getting close to God whenever you know we, we're finally in our about we think we're you know we're really on the pathway uh, that we've never been before, and so now that we're side to serve God, that the enemy is not going to come against us anymore because we do all these things. First of all, yeah, enemy, he, he is going to come against you, just but he's going to do it either either way. But what David did after he knocked Goliath out, he didn't just walk away and say, "Okay, everything's good." He did what? Took his hat off. He took his hat off. He took the sword and took his hat off. Head, why head? Head represents authority. Authority is right. The enemy, so let me say this. Go ahead and say the enemy will keep on coming after you. The enemy will keep on coming after you until you remove his head. Until you remove his authority. The reason why he keeps coming after you concerning whatever, if it's your mind, if it's your body, if it's whatever it is. I don't know. The enemy comes after you so many different ways. He comes after me totally different than he comes after you because my weakness is not your weakness. You, I mean, he, 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 knows you, he knows your weak link, and he comes against you. And, and we think just because we're doing well, we think just because, um, you know, we're, we're on, it's 7 o'clock on a, on a Wednesday night, we're in church, the enemy should leave us alone. He's not. But you have to understand as well, you don't just throw one rock at him and he, when he falls down, you, you can knock him out several times. But he'll just keep on coming after you. And he will keep coming after you until you remove his authority, you remove his right. Okay, well, how do I do that? Well, the sword represents, if the head represents authority, the sword represents the word. And so you just keep on coming after him with that word. And you can literally envision that you, you literally, let me say this just part of my spirit. Whatever you, it's not what, whatever you fight, you will never have to fight again. It's whatever you fight and win, you never have to fight again. As Christians, we get, we, we're too soft. We just, we just give up right in the middle of the fight. Honey, don't give up. Fight until you win. Fight until you get that deliverance. 
this is this is a battle. Paul says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but powers and principles. You, this this is this is a battle. If, if it's a battle over your mind, if it's a battle over your heart, if it's a battle over physical things, emotional things, whatever, it is a battle. Somebody's going to win. Remember what I told you Sunday? There's only two types of people. Those are being dominated by the flesh and those are being dominated by the spirit. And you have to get to the point that you're being dominant. And the reason why I say spirit, is so we're the enemy in that. He's on the flesh side. He feeds off the flesh. Right? <laughs> I mean... I'll give you a good illustration. In the book of Genesis, the enemy showed up as a snake. It actually showed up as a lizard because he had, he, had, he, had, he, had, he had legs. In Revelation, he showed up as a dragon. Somebody's been feeding that joker. He went from a lizard to a dragon. He, he's, and what does he feed off of? He feeds off your flesh. Feeds off your flesh. Well, that's not... So, so we always think, we always think that flesh is not spirit. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not, not spirit or, or as far as like evil spirits. Evil, the, the, the enemy feeds off your flesh. So when you're being dominated by your flesh, then you are empowering, empowering spiritual wickedness and principalities and powers to, to come, come, come against you. Remember, remember he has power, but he has no right. There's that authority again. So anyway, so keep on. Uh, so, so, so with this, we can go. We can go so many, um, um, so many things on that. But but keep on going after. Keep on, and, and, and quit and quit quit trying to get an answer as to why you're going through what you're going through, and replace that why with what are you going to do with what you're going through. That was a lot better than you shook your head on. Why am I going through this? 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 There, there's no answer to tell you why. There's some things we don't know. So to change the narrative, it's not why am I going through what I'm going through. What am I going to do with what I'm going through? Hmm? Want me to say that for the third time? Because it, may, it, really get, it'll be, it really get into the Holy Trinity now. It's not why you're going through what you're going through. Because you, you'll drive yourself bonkers. Okay, I'm going through this. What am I going to do with it? What am I going to do with this attack? What am I going to do with this mindset? What am I going to do with it? I made a huge mistake. When I, when I first came here, one of my biggest mistakes I had is that I didn't like nothing. Didn't like Shalot. Didn't like Brunswick County. Didn't like the church. Didn't like nothing. I said a prayer a couple years before God sent me down here when I knew God was transitioning my ministry. I said, God, I don't care where you send me. I just, I just, I just, I just want to be, be where you have me to go. And it was about two years later when he dropped me off here. I was like, okay, God, I've, I got a lot of other prayers that you didn't answer. Well, you answered this one. Why didn't you answer one of these that, that explicitly? And I'll be honest with you, we did. When we hit the ground running, and boy, we come against resistance like you wouldn't believe. All kinds of stuff. And I went from here, and, 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 and I was, it's, it's my church. They didn't like me. I didn't like them. <laughs> they didn't like me being here. I didn't like being here. Just, just, I mean, I don't mean that flippantly. It wasn't the fact that we weren't trying hard and doing everything we could do. I mean, we went after everything we had. Didn't we believe everything we had? Everything. But it just, everything won't work and everything won't work out. And finally, and it was just, it just all, all kinds of stuff. I ain't got time to go through all that. And the Holy Spirit dealt with me. He says, you got to be the change you want to be. Don't just keep on whining and complaining about everything. Be the change you want to, not you want to be, that you want to see. And, and, and quit, and, and, and quit killing it, what you're trying to grow. You can't grow something you keep on trying to kill. And then, um, so, so that's, that's, the, that's the point that, it's, it's not why you're going through what it is. What are you going to do with what God has dropped you in? And now next year will be 25 years, believe it or not, since 1998 when we came down here. And I'll tell you the reason why. If you're a pastor, if you listen to this, or, and a lot of people do, and even here tonight or whatever, don't question God why. Ask God, what do you want me to do with this? God, what do you want me to do with this? What do you want me to do with this? And he'll, he'll bless it. Amen? Children, what do you want me to look at your Look at your child. What do you want me to do with this? Look at your husband. What do you want me to do with this? 
Why do bad things happen to good people? Because bad things happen to good people. I just answered that. Do you hear what I said? Why do bad things happen to good people? Because bad things happen to good people. You can see the one I just said on that one. Um, I was going to do this one, but I'm going to wait um, to like next time. Okay, let's give something a little bit funner. So when you pass your church, you get make up words. Funner. Is there a second offer of salvation after the rapture? I figure we do some eschatology stuff. I mean, you know, Jesus is coming back. Is there a second offer of salvation after the rapture? I guess what, and you can find 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2 and verse 10 and put it up whenever you get it. Um, I guess what you're asking is, well, I don't know. I mean, just, is there a second offer? A second offer. I read your question the same way I read my Bible. You gotta, you gotta, you can't just read it. You gotta read it. So somebody put a second offer. Now, me, me, let me deal with what you, what this question didn't say. Will people get saved during the tribulation? Because that's after the rapture. You got, you got to understand the chronological order of, of, of end time events. The next great prophetic uh, prophecy is going to take place is the rapture of the church. That's a catch away to the saints. Okay, it's going to be gone. After the rapture of the church, then starts the tribulation. After seven years of tribulation, then Jesus comes back. Two different events. Okay, so during that tribulation period, where people get, where people get saved? Yes. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is still here. The Holy Spirit is still here. Um, the church is taken out of the way, but the Holy Spirit is still here. And no man can be saved except for, by the Holy Spirit of God. So people will still be getting saved during the tribulation period. Okay? They, they will be. The Bible says, Whosoever called upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's in Acts chapter number 2. Whosoever called upon the name of the Lord. I'm here to tell you there will be people calling upon the name of the Lord during the tribulation period like never before. Um, I believe, let me throw this in, I, be, I believe that nobody wrote this, asked this, will there be a great revival? A lot of people say it. You can't really find it in Scripture, which I can. I'm going to go through it tonight, about will there be a great end-time revival that's going to sweep the heavens and the earth? I, I believe with all my heart that will be before Jesus comes back. And I believe Jesus should have came back a lot, several years ago. So we're past, we're past due for, for, for an earth-shaking revival. But at the same time, the harvest is white. Boy, it's, it's ready to be plucked. Um, so I believe that will happen. But I do know this. There will be, there will be a, a lot of, there will be, be even more than that souls being saved during the tribulation period. So people will, people will be saved. So the scripture is, and, and all... And all the ways that the wicked deceives those who are perishing. And all the ways that the wicked deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Verse 11. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. Verse 12, and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in the wickedness. Keep that one up there. So the question was, is there a second offer of salvation after the rapture? The second one means you're condemned because you didn't believe the truth. The first offer you rejected. So let me go ahead and make you night. Let me put it to you this way, simple to know how. People is not, if Jesus comes back tonight, people who's not in here tonight, they still got a chance here in tribulation. The fact that you're in here right now and listen to me, you don't have a chance during tribulation. Why? Because you, you have not believed the truth. Go back to verse 11. I'm teaching how to study the Bible. 
For this reason, God sends the power of delusion. They will believe a lie. Go back to verse 10. And deal with both of them. All the ways of wicked deceive those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Not because you didn't hear enough Billy Graham sermons. Not because you didn't, you didn't hear enough altar calls. It's just that so many times you left out of here completely disregarding everything I just said. And the most important thing, you completely disregarded the calling of the Holy Spirit of God who followed you all the way to the car. And you had to battle through some things. And then finally you just said no. And so after the rapture of the church takes place, then this kicks in, verse 11. For that reason, God sends a powerful delusion. So now you'll believe a lie. If you don't believe the truth, if you reject the truth, you're going to start believing a lie. And then verse 12, so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. That's why the word of God says, I don't like it, but I'm just here to tell you, if you're going to, if you're going to reject, if you, if you reject it, if you reject him now with, 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 with the church being here with, with, with singing and preaching and, and just lights and you know led borders reason why and here's it helps for your kids and all this kind of stuff honey when the when the church is you you won't do with everything god gave you and then you just you're gonna be god will send an illusion that what you what you don't think you'll believe in you will fall for <clears throat> amen oh my oh my goodness say something it's in the bible i can't does that make any sense? It's, it's, we don't have to like it, but it's, it's the truth. And so, I mean, you have to, you have to, you, you have, you have to watch it. You have to, you have to watch it. I thought was pretty interested, just kind of going with this. Um, before I get to that, last week, what was it? Somebody asked, like, was it? Oh, I know what it was. The cremation. The cremation last week. We had several. I forgot. How, it was like five or six. Uh, just come up with cream I thought was you know but somebody came to me after service and kind of gave me a little bit I, I, I gave I gave the answer based on the fact of you know the, the person you know, being cremated you know I mean how many people visualized the poor dude you know he's enjoying heaven thought he finally make it and then because his, his wife cremated him he, he's got to leave <laughs> if you remember that one like, ah, please you did that I go to hell because she burned me up. Um, and the person doing it, you know, just because, you know, what? Anyway, so we, we dealt with that. The next one was the reason why a lot of people ask this, and I, and I forgot about this. This is years ago. I remember this. is because of the fact um, at the trump of God, the dead in Christ will rise first. And talking about their body, you know, the dead in Christ. First Thessalonians five sixteen, um, at, at, the, at the trump of God, the dead in Christ will rise first. Then those are then those are alive remain shall be called together to meet the Lord in air, so shall ever be with the Lord. But the dead in Christ going to rise first. Well, if it, you know if your wife just cooked you and you're nothing but ashes and are urned up on the on the fireplace mantle, which when she gets remarried, you're now in the attic. Um, <laughs> I mean, how the, how the heck are you going <laughs> to, what's God going to do with that? <laughs> Come on, man. Y'all in the right church. We think the same. I know y'all, I know y'all, we think the same. I've been reading your questions. You know, it's the same. Okay. So it's the same. I mean, so it doesn't matter whether, whether you're cremated through, you know, because she gave somebody $450 to do that down the street or, you know, the souls that was on USS Arizona when the Pearl Harbor hit and, and, and the, the whole boat just, you know, just blew up. Um, I'm telling you, there's, there, there's less of them there than, than there is, in, you know, someone who gets cremated down the road. So people get confused. What is, how does the dead in Christ rise up how does their spirit and soul you know come back together their body when their body is in an urn up in the attic if that's where it's at 
or on the mantle, wherever you want to be. <laughs> so I tell you, I don't get in that stuff. Um, I mean, because God, I mean, God created us out of the, how little, you know, just deal with this. God, God created us from the, from the, from the, from the dirt. I mean, anyway, it was just dirt. I mean, he, cre- he created our, our body. That, that's our bodies. That's our bodies. And so God can, I mean, obviously, if God can do everything else we're talking can do, he definitely can gather all your ashes, whether you're in the bottom of the Pacific Ocean because of wars or you're in an urn up in the attic. I mean, right? Come on, let's just, let's just deal with it. I mean, we try. We, we, we try. My grandfather told me this. He knows more now than I've for, for, forgotten. About, about this stuff. 90 years old, pastor forever. He looked at me whenever, in 1980, when I came to pastor his church, he looked at me, he said this, at 88 years of age, he said, son, 98% of this is common sense. Use it. And this is a man, I mean, who, who just did things in the spiritual realm that, that I, I still hadn't even, <laughs> anyway, a lot. And so, so you, sometimes you, you, you just use your, you use your common sense on this. So, so of course God can, God can do that, whether you're six foot under with a tombstone with your name on a non, or whether your ashes were spread out, you know, over Atlantic Ocean, over a baseball field. It doesn't matter. Here's one thing I do think is pretty cool, though, is, you know, whenever we talk about our spirit and soul enter back in our body, the reason why it's important that that happens, first of all, is that we, we get a glorified body. We get, a, we get a new body anyway, so he's going to put it back together. This, this uh, immortality is going to put on, uh, this, this mortality is going to put on immortality. This, this corruption is going to put on incorruption. That's what 1 Corinthians 15 says. And, and so, the, so after the rapture, whenever it takes, at the rapture, when this takes place, so because I told you, be absent from the body of your presence of the Lord, and your spirit and soul is, 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 is in eternity. And uh, if, if you're with Jesus, and, and it's, what's important that we, that our, our spirit and soul are reunited with our body is because the way you have it right now is that God got two-thirds of us back. He got of, of his creation. He got our spirit. He got our soul. But he didn't get our body because our body is either, you know, in a nice little casket six foot under the ground or, you know, it's, it's in an urn or it's spread over somewhere because of the, the, the disastrous way it, it passed away. And so theoretically thinking you can see that Satan didn't get our spirit, didn't get our soul, but he did get our body. But at the trump of God, God says, oh, no, no, no. You didn't get a spirit, you didn't get a soul, and you don't get his body because I'm going to resurrect that body and put it back with a spirit and soul. It'll just be a, a, a body that will live with God forever and ever and ever. So if you don't like your body now, don't freak out that you're going to have some time away from it and then God's going to give it back to you. No, it's going to be a cool body. You're going to like it. Amen. Come on, you can amen that. Amen. And if you really, if you're one of these that really actually like looking in the mirror about yourself, then God really, you probably won't get one nothing like that because that almost kept you out of heaven to start off with. I mean, right? Does that make, I mean, come on, does that make sense? I can throw all kinds of scripture out and prove it back up every single thing that I just said, but that's what it is. So our spirit and soul will be, and the whole thing about our body, so if we're still alive at the, at the trump of God, in the moment, and this corruption can put on incorruption, this mortality put on immortality, and, and a twinkling of an eye. He didn't say a blinking of an eye, he said a twinkling of an eye. GE says a twinkling of an eye is one one hundredth of a second. That's quicker than a, that's quicker than a blink. So in a twinkling of an eye, we're going to be changed. The rapture is going to be changed. How many of you can't say, Father, please forgive me. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I will not ever do it again. Please let me take God with you. <laughs> you can't do that in a blink, <laughs> let alone in a twink of an eye. Right? So you better live, you better live right. right. Now, I just told you because you sit in here and heard this, you don't have a chance in tribulation. <laughs> I'm the messenger, man. I, don't make, I, I didn't write this, the book. I, I read the book. I mean, right? So anyway, so, so, so my point is, is that, um, so, so we're going to be changing the moment, up. even the whole thing with the rapture. We always think the rapture, we're going to be here, we're going to be gone. I don't think we're going to hang here long, but he didn't say we're going to be gone in a moment and twinkle of an eye. We're going to be changed in a moment and twinkle of an eye. I don't know how long we're going to shashay around here in this new body. <laughs> I hope it's a few minutes anyway. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> What's up, everybody? Yeah, I'm glowing. 
Why ain't you glowing? <laughs> Told y'all listen to me. Told y'all went crazy. Then by that time, we're going to start heading up. Right? Come on, my story is a lot better than the dead, dry, religious one y'all have, you know. I mean, I just think it's going to be, oh, okay. Right? So it's going to be, it's going to be changed. And so, oh, it's called, so I bought it. So, so we, but the dead in Christ is going to rise first, and then those alive remain. All this is going to happen at one time. So the body is going to come up. Ours is going to be changed all, all at the same time. All at the same time. Whether you've been, whether you've been, you know, whether you've been dismembered and whether you've been cremated, whether, you know, you're, I mean, or whether, you know, you're just laid out in your best suit. doesn't matter. God's going to put us all together. And, 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 and therefore, because every, every bit of us belongs to God. As a child of God, every bit of us belongs to God. The devil can't have any of us. And he won't have any of us. That's why, the, that's why the healing of our spirit, soul, and body is very important to God. Amen? So, um, so that, was, that was fun. So we did that. Um, okay. Ten minutes. Five minutes. Oh, we don't have time for that one. Now I'm running out of time trying to figure out. Why does Satan have power and praise on this earth? Why does, oh, I didn't that one last week. Why does Satan have power and praise on this earth? Why doesn't God remove him? I told you he won't be dictated. God has a plan. You right here last week? He's got a plan. Just because the world's going completely crazy doesn't mean God's going to change his mind and hurry up and do something. No, he's cool. He's good. No matter how, how crazy, how wicked or whatever, the only, the, the only people that can hasten to come and back of the Lord is what Peter says are Christians, not people doing bad. But, 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 but saints doing good. Um, I'll pick this one. Is it true? We really going to go to another direction real fast. Is it true that when casting out evil spirits, if the people is not truly strong in Christ, it will go in them? It is a good question. So the way, I did, the way I read that, if you're casting the devil out of somebody or trying to cast the devil out of somebody, and so let's, let's, let's break it down, okay? I'm going to talk I'm, I'm teaching demonology right now. Um, so so let's, let's, let's lose, just use this question. So, you know, the Bible says, um, let's, go, let's, go to, let's go to Mark 16 real fast. These signs shall follow them that believe, Okay? Everybody listen to me because you're going to start saying, well, I'm not a preacher. I'm not this. I don't speak in tongue. I don't do this. I don't do that. I don't show everything. The prerequisite of casting out devils and lay hands on the sick, according to Mark 16, is these signs shall follow them that believe, comma, in my name you shall cast out devils. Right? Is everybody with me? These, shall, these signs shall follow them that believe. How many believers do we have in the house? On Wednesday night, it's probably everybody. So that means every believer has the ability to cast out devils, according to the Bible. You have the, you have the, right, the ability to lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Um, so if the person's casting out that devil, then that person who's casting out the devil is a believer. He's a believer because the Spirit of God dwells in him, not because he's in church, but because a, 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 a Christian is someone in whom the Spirit of God dwells in. The Holy Spirit lives in you. That's what makes you a Christian. He comes in here and dwells in you. So now you have the ability to cast out devils. So, this per so now we're dealing with a person who's demonic possessed. To my casting out a devil. I'm talking about eyes roll back in the head and milky looking. I mean, it's it's a 110 pound female and it sounds like a 320 pound man. <laughs> it's on right now, baby. We 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 own something. And you're ready to cast this thing out. Can it come out of them and come into you? No. Because a Christian, not only someone who the Spirit of God dwells, but a Christian is someone who is owned by the Holy Spirit of God. Hear what I just said? Own. So we're talking about ownership. If we're talking about, so now, this is not on here. And so now if we're talking about people who, um, if we're talking about people that 
Um, oh, man, what I was going to say. I had two thoughts coming ahead at the same time. If we're talking about someone that, someone that is owned by the Holy Spirit, if we're talking about someone being affected by the Holy Spirit, I mean, can Christians be affected by demonic spirit? Of course, we all are on a daily basis. But then as the people ask all the time, can a Christian be possessed by the devil? If possession, you mean ownership, no. I've cast out demons. It's, it's, there's nothing glorious about it. There's nothing fun about it. There's nothing easy about it. We go ahead and make that known. People who want to think, think it is, no. Um, we, have, we have cast out devils in this church. See them hit the ground. I mean like, Oh, they hit the ground. Power of God must be on them. Next thing you look up, their eyes roll back in the head and just all kind of just snore, all kinds of stuff. Cast the devil on them. I had one. Let me go ahead. I got two minutes. I'm getting ready to really hit y'all hard and run. So I'm just apologizing in advance. This person, the devil came on them, jump, did jump into another person. How do you know? It was his brother. How do you know? I'm not one of these who cast out. Me, I don't interview demon spirit. Who are you? What's your name? Why are you there? Come out. That's, that's the only interview and I do. This guy looked back at me. You probably remember that night. I don't know if you were there. Or not. Huh? Oh, yeah. All of them say no. Yeah, I don't want to go. No, you're coming. But, yeah, they say no. But this one right here, anyway, so, so, so my point to answer this question is that, um, is that he says, my name is Murder. And it was two, there was two other ones. They had three. My name is Murder, and I'm not coming out. And anyway, we cast it out. Uh, before I could cast it out, I believe you were there. We're going way back. We're going back like 15 years or so. And I turned around, and I turned around, and I, and I was we're having trouble. And I turned around and looked, and the Holy Spirit showed me a person standing there. I not know who it was. And I said, move him. Where I said, get him. Move him, like, from up there. Because there was, there was a non-believer that was up there, and it was hindering what me trying to cast the devil out of this person. We moved him out, and within a minute, bam, it was completely set free. This person was completely set free. The guy that we removed killed his daddy the next week. Right down here on 211. Spirit of murder left him, went into him, bam, shot his daddy. Now, I didn't know it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I didn't know what was going on. So, I told you in the right church. This stuff is real. So, so when I get up and say, we need to teach our children a whole different ramp, this whole Halloween stuff that everybody's like, I just want to do it, or whatever. Dude, there's a whole ram out there you have no idea. And I don't say it just to, because I want to fight or I want someone to be labeled whatever. Man, when you go through stuff like that, it changes you. And you see it and you hear it. So, um, so what's your point? When that devil left that person, being in ownership, that demonic spirit, it cannot enter anybody who, is, who, who, who has a spirit of God living on inside of them. But if there's someone in there who does, who does not, I have, I have cleared a room. I've, talk, I've, I've seen people and the spirit of God check me and say, do not cast this devil at this person. Take them to another room. We take them out of the room and deliver them there. Why? Because I don't have clearance in this room that everybody in here is not owned by the Holy Spirit of God and there is an opportunity that devil can go into that person. Don't y'all love demonology? Well, I didn't know that, Pastor Gerald Wood. I'm just trying to make it to heaven. <laughs> That answer your question? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got to pray. I'm sorry. It's 741. We got a bunch of kids out there. And them people are going to, they're going to jump over me like a mad person if I keep them out there too long. Everybody okay? Smile at me. Make sure you're all right. I, I didn't mean to end it that way, but it just, I really thought I had time for one more, a little bit lighter note. But hey, we, we're victorious in all things. Amen? Amen. I was winning. I might have to do a third week just to really get y'all a little bit happier in here. I get some, we all pump, cut air on in here. Put some air back in this room, man. Everybody. <laughs> y'all good? Raise your, raise your hand again if you're a believer. Spirit of God. Oh, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Boy, I love God.
God. Yeah. Yeah. Let's ask you. Yeah. Y'all fired up now. Y'all fired up now. Oh, crazy devil. He coming in me. <laughs> uh, Father, we thank you for your word, because your word says it's free, God. We thank you, Lord, that the power of life and death is inside of us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us, God. Lead us, God, and direct us, God. Take your word and everything we've learned tonight, God, and apply it to our heart. May we use it only for ourselves, but for every person we come in contact with. In Jesus' name, I bless this congregation. Amen. Amen. All right, God bless you. We'll see you Sunday. Thank you for joining us today. We are so glad to connect with you. If you are new to HP and want to get more involved, I invite you to text 910-501-2005. Or you can download our church app and stay up to date on everything going on around here. I also want to tell you three ways you can give today. You can give through text. Text any amount to 84321. If you've never set that up, it only takes a moment. You can give right through your phone at any time. Second, you can give online through our website. Go to highestpraisechurch.com and click the giving tab. You can give right there online. Finally, you can give through mail. You can send in your gift to P.O. Box 1189, Shalote, North Carolina, 28459. And if you're looking for a way to plug in, to serve, or be a part of what's going on here at Highest Praise, join us for our next step class. It's the first Sunday of every month at 9 a.m. We are so glad you joined us today. God is not done with your life. If you need prayer, have any questions, you can reach us through social media or you can call our office at 910-754-4809. We love you, highest praise, and the best is now.